Well, folks, unfortunately, this week there will not be a new episode of Diva Speak TV. But all is not lost because it is that time again. It's Black History Month. And before we get into our sad moments in Black History for this year, I figured I would give those who don't know about it a little refresher course. Check it We have a sad moment in Black History. Wait in the water. Wait <laughs> in the water, children. Wait in the water. Trouble's gonna come up the water. Oh, this middle passage. So in honor of Black History Month, we here at Diva Speak TV wanted to shed some light on some sad moments in black history just to remind folks so that we don't do it again in the future. Yeah, feel me? This week's sad moment in the blackness is a film that touched all of our lives, unfortunately. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about the major motion picture, Soul Plane. Not to be confused with Soul Train, which was actually a great moment in black history. But once we got into the air, it seemed like everything went downhill. Soul Plane was a film written by Bo Zenga and Chuck Wilson, directed by Jesse Torero, that came out in 2004 to the dismay of many of us in the world with brown skin and a brain. The film starred actors like Snoop Doggy Dogg, Method Man, Tom Arnold, Monique S'more, Kevin Hart. This does seem like, you know, an Oscar award winning ensemble cast. The foolery that went on in this film is absolutely absurd. Basketball courts in the terminal, fried chicken on the plane, the pilot is high. I mean, come on, really? Supposedly, this was originally going to be the black version of Airplane, which is a classic film starring Leslie Nielsen. Kevin Hart, Leslie Nielsen, comic genius, comic coon. Since I don't know the words you're using, I'ma just take that as disrespect. The only thing that would have made Soul Plane worse is if Bill Clinton had been in the movie doing a cameo, playing the saxophone on the plane. No, 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 no. I mean, he is the first black president, right? Damn, I should have took that cameo. Fucking Middle Eastern talks. Hey, man, just calling it what it is. A sad moment in black history. So, folks, we bring you to another edition of A Sad Moment in Black History. <laughs> now, this man has become much of an icon and quote-unquote activist in the black community. He's run for office twice. He has the Rainbow Push Coalition. We know him as Jesse Jackson. Now, you know, Jesse was on that balcony with Martin that day in Tennessee. And Jesse, he does, you know, give us the rhymes that keep hope alive. But today's sad moment in black history goes to the day that he became Messy Jesse. Hey, Dave, how did he become known as Messy Jesse? Was it because of how he eats his wings at Hooters? Oh, Jesse, you so messy. Hey, he become known as Messy Jesse because of how he eats his Mac real sandwich. Oh, Jesse, you so messy. Did he become known as Messy Jesse because of how he kept his room when he was younger? Oh, Jesse, you so messy. No. Jesse Jackson got dubbed Messy Jesse when in 2001, it was discovered that he had actually fathered a child with a staffer named Karen Stanford. Ooh, now that's messy. According to CNN, in 1999, Jesse fathered a child named Ashley with the staffer Karen Stanford. Oh, Jesse, you so messy. It's one thing to just say, oh, there was a kid here, but they actually have on record that the Rainbow Push Coalition paid this woman, Karen Stanford, $15,000 in moving expenses and uh, $21,000 in payment for contracting work. Oh, Jesse, you're so messy. 
Every month, Messy Jesse pays $3,000 in child support. And it didn't help that Karen Stanford is a white woman. That was the day that we realized that the same man who was on the balcony with Martin, the same man who had run for president twice, well, he really wasn't that good of a man at all. At least to his wife. And if he can't be faithful to the woman he took oath with in a church, how's he going to be faithful to us we don't even know? Messy Jesse. You made me cry. <clears throat> Folks, it's time for another sad moment in black history. In the history of black music, we have sung songs about overcoming. We shall overcome. We have sung songs about redemption. Redemption songs, won't you ever say. We have sung songs about fighting the power. Elvis was a hero to most, but he never meant shit to me. Is he straight out racist? The cycle was simple and plain. Pull the fuck your man, John Wayne. Fight the power. Fight the power. This week, I remind everyone of the thong song. <laughs> when R&B group Drew Hill came out with wonderfully Jodeci-esque songs like April showers, tell me, five steps, these are the times, you know, classics. And everybody loved Cisco. He was small, but his voice was big. Cisco dropped his album, Enter the Dragon, in 1999. And to mine and a lot of my fellow brothers and sisters' horrors, He came out with the thong song, which premiered him doing cartwheels on the beach with a blonde hairstyle and had everybody across the nation in clubs flossing their butt floss. Now see, the whole idea of a thong is that you're not supposed to be able to see panty lines. But with this song, it became cool now to just floss your thong. And everybody was in the club and then it had thong contests. So now, young girls of 16, Fat women that shouldn't be wearing thongs. Girls who know better at 38 were on the floor shaking their ass in a thong, and it was very, very ridiculous. I think I'll sing it again. She had dumps like a truck, truck, truck. Guys like all night long. Let me see that thong. Moment in black history, especially for us women. Because I know, not that I was degraded by the thong song, but that I could never hear Cisco sing another serious RB song again after hearing him herald for over three minutes the thong, the thong, thong, thong. Why did everybody like that song? I have to give myself a letdown though, because. I did participate in a thong contest. <laughs> but I was young, I didn't know any better. <gasps> yeah, right. And we're Well, ladies and gents, it's been a hell of a Black History Month, and we've spent all month giving you some sad moments in Black history. We touched on the movies with Soul Plane. We hit up politics with Messy Jesse. We even touched music when we had our man Cisco and the thong song. Well, even though they tried to slight us for the month of February and only give us 21 days, we felt like, fuck that, we still got one more sad moment in black history to hit y'all with. And it's probably the saddest moment. This man transcends movies, television, and politics. He's probably the most famous man in the world. And he is also our saddest moment in black history. Michael J. Jackson. <sighs> Talk amongst yourselves. I remember when he used to dance with his brothers on TV station. Had a perfect afro, wore bell bottom pants. Then he became a Caucasian as his melanin faded away. Oh, Michael, why, why? Oh, Michael, why? 
Oh, my little Michael, what happened to your nose? Oh, Michael, why? Uh, I know. It's a tearjerker. But it's all good because we got some more for you. Yes, next week, a new episode of Diva Speak TV and the first sad moment in black history for 09.